This is 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV. Now, I first saw this vehicle at Chicago Auto Show just about a year ago. I was really impressed with the overall look of this vehicle. Took a glimpse inside, saw the big screens, and they were like, wow, Chevy is really taking it to the next level. Now, at that time, there was really no information available as far as the powertrains, as far as the range, or anything like this. And then, as the year progressed, some of the magazines that some reviews of this vehicle and some raved about it. Now, the Motor Trend called it the automobile of the year. Some of the other publications were not as favorable. So today, I'm going to take you on the tour of this vehicle, starting right up front, then walking around it, talking about the design elements, checking out the newest, latest, greatest technology. And yes, at the end of this video, I'm going to take you for a spin. And this is all thanks to Gettle Chevrolet in Punta Gorda, Florida. So big shout out and thank you to those guys for making this video possible. And if you like watching videos like this, don't forget to check out the rest of my channel. If you like it, give me a like, don't be shy, hit that subscribe button, and now let's get back to this. Well, so if you were a fan of the original Blazer, I'm talking the 80s and 90s, the big bulky square off-road SUV, well, this is not it. As you can see, this is definitely more sporty, more aggressive look, and some people like it, some people don't. I, I guess you gotta put it in the right category to appreciate it or not. Uh, so if you're looking for an off-road vehicle, look elsewhere. But if you're looking for a crossover uh, that's electric, that might be a vehicle for you. I, overall, I like the design. As I mentioned before, I like the styling of it and what they've done with it. It's uh, very flat as far as the hood. It's got a, a little bulge right in the middle over here. And the design of the lights, they're all LEDs. And as you can see, it has this light bar that glows, that almost connecting the lights, interrupted by this black Chevy bow tie and you have some open elements in here since all of this grill is closed up like on most of the electric vehicle you have some open air curtains that actually make this vehicle more aerodynamic you also have a little bit of open spaces here this is all piano black with this gray finish in here and this is the rs trim level now some of the electric vehicles have the front some of them don't if you're wondering if this one has it or not well let's pop it open and see so the hood opens and underneath here there is no storage instead you have this big plastic cover and the only two things you can do as the owner of this vehicle is check or top off your brake fluid and maybe top off your windshield washer fluid but if you are a firefighter this is where you access this vehicle now this is of course in case of this vehicle being disabled an accident or anything like this they can get in there and do their thing now it's uh, held up by two hood struts some sound insulation not sure why since it doesn't make any noise and uh, there's really three different and uh, power options for this vehicle. Now this particular one is an all-wheel drive which gets the least powerful 288 horsepower uh, electric motors. There's actually two but the total output is 288. If you opt in, yes it's optional to get a real-wheel drive, you get the 340 horsepower motor and if you opt in for the SS which is the most powerful one, yes you get the 555 horsepower beast that will take you zero to 60 in less than four seconds now let's take a look at the design overall i like it take a look on the indents on the side this is pretty cool because this also houses the charging port that's power operated you push this a uh, little indent 
here and it opens up the electric charger. Now Chevy says you have access to about 160,000 charging ports because they teamed up with Tesla so you can use the Tesla chargers for that and now down here you have the 21 inch wheels. Now the rims are designed for the electric vehicles but not only the rims but also the tires. If you look at the tires itself it says right here this is for electric vehicle only and as far as the size of the tires you have 275 45 on 21 and trim. I like this uh, side marker over here as well as this piano black trim that goes around the entire vehicle at the bottom, at the top, and the roof rails as well. If we take a closer peek, you see the tops of the mirrors are black. You have the turn signal indicator, you have the side view camera, and the blind spot that says the mirrors are also heated on this RS trim level and again the surroundings are all black now you do have the smart entry system to the vehicle but you do have to press the button in order to lock it or unlock it and the door handles really nothing special a lot of manufacturers are going for the door handles that pop up off the doors kind of a unique look well this one doesn't have it as we go around the corner of this vehicle the shape the sporty the aggressive shape continues in here and uh, you can see some features right here on top you have the shark fin antenna this is your third brake light exposed wiper and of course you have this big bright led tail light and all-wheel drive rs this is the trim that i have for you today black chevy bow tie you have two cameras one the rear view camera and the second one is for the mirror and then you have the blazer pay attention the blazer the e looks like the electric charger that indicates that it is an electric vehicle down at the bottom you have the reverse lights and the reflector lights and overall it looks pretty cool now if you open this up power tailgate and that reveals about 26 cubic feet of cargo space so not the best not the worst in its glass it's got some illuminations in the cargo compartment and the seats can be folded down to have a bit more storage in here if that's enough for you you can go for this if not go for something else underneath here you'll find some charging cables what's interesting about this that uh, this charger comes with two different cables that you can plug in here. Uh, this one, as you can see, this is the regular household outlet, 110 volt. And the other one, you can plug into the 240 volt. And uh, you can charge it at home. Um, and then you have some other goodies in here. This is to hold your charger inside of here. And that's pretty much it. Uh, no sunroof in this particular one. And we're going to jump inside, see if there's any room in the second row seat. Starting with the rear door panel, I like this trim piece right here. Uh, this is shiny, kind of encased in this plastic, and uh, this is matte black, both kind of similar design here. Now you also have this Ecotec trimming for the armrest, and you have the dual color contrast stitching, same color as the BMW. All right, so we have uh, the fabric down at the bottom, the speaker, a little bit of storage in the door itself. Now let's take a look on the inside. First thing I want to mention, this is an E all-wheel drive, which is an all-wheel drive vehicle. There's no bump. The floor is perfectly flat. That's because the all-wheel drive is not like the traditional one. You have the drive shaft, but it has the electric motor in the back and electric motor in the front. So that's how that works. Now, in both driver and passenger seats, you have the seat back pockets. You also have your own vents and the heated seat controls, as well as two USB type C ports. Now, where are the cup holders? Oh, the only cup holders that you'll have is right here in the armrest and uh, look at the seats i like how they look this is the ecotech material on the outside and this micro suede on the inside it's looking good it's actually very comfortable i sat in it so three people can sit in comfortably in here and you also have two seats that are equipped with the uh, attachments for the child seats and as someone who's almost six feet tall, I fit in quite nicely. Plenty of headroom, shoulder room, and knee room. Let's take a look. Very nice and comfortable. Look how much room I have before I would hit the back of the seat. My feet fit nicely in the footwells below. So no complaints as far as the comfort and roominess in the back. And before we get inside, let's take a look at this key fob, standard Chevy key fob. Uh, you have the unlock lock, two times to start, two times to open the gate and the panic button black Chevy bow tie in the back. They also have the emergency key that's inside of here. Let's listen to the sound of the closing door. Oh, it's heavy door. 
it's okay it's not too bad and inside take a look at this door panel so you have this contrast stitching right on top contrast stitching here in the middle you have the same trim as in the back with the addition to two memory seat settings and the lock and unlock and of course your window mirrors controls and right here you have the opener for the rear gate as well as much more storage than in the back now uh, the seats are power adjusted and i like the way it looks check this out really nice comfortable you can see the rs right here and you can see that this ecotech right on the side with this micro suede in the middle you have the red tubing and the contrast stitching overall a very pleasant look of this vehicle also pay attention to the vents right here they're kind of uh, red maybe not red but burgundy color in here adds to the design and the look sporty look of this vehicle and on the left hand side you have the parking there you go you can hear the parking brake applied and then you have the lane keep assist auto hold and the dimmer for the instrument cluster and the screens so wait till you see the screens inside here's the interior of this 2024 chevy blazer ev let's take a look you already take a look at the vans and let's take a look right here you can see this trim piece very similar to what you see on the door this is the micro suede this is soft touch material so really nice and quality components in here you also have the head up display i don't know if you can see that it's right there and then you have this electronic mirror which you can turn on or off if you don't like what you see big screen 17.7 inches screen the largest in its class according to chevy and then uh, look at the steering wheel rs at the bottom here you have this black bow tie you have a few buttons now let's see this is for your cruise control and this is for your voice control you have your uh, volume or you have your media then you have your heated steering wheel and then we can change stuff inside of this instrument cluster which is an 11 inch screen and let's see what we have here so we can change this right now zero miles per hour one kilowatt all right if you want to drive with google maps 10 on location on center screen and audio unavailable so several different settings that you can change here as far as the design definitely a little bit different than what we've seen on the regular gm models but the big thing is the screen not on the big in size but also as far as the uh, look of it and functionality so if you look at the side of it they have the screen not cutting off like some of the other ones straight down but it actually curves with the bezel and they kind of tilt it towards the driver so it's easy to look at there's also a power button right here so if you want to turn this on or off right now it's the volume here we just turn the volume off but hit this stay in demo mode it's a brand new vehicle if you want to turn this off there you go i just turned the screen off turn the screen back on and this is chevy's infotainment system this is brand new this is uh, done with google so you have the google assistant and i'm pretty sure that at one point i'm going to say google and it's going to say hey what's up maybe maybe not but let's take a look at the um, icons so audio that's self-explanatory so you got the am fm sirius xm bluetooth news usb podcast and then we go back to our home screen you have maps actually i don't have this vehicle connected to the internet so i'm not sure how well it's gonna do go to settings okay no, we're not gonna turn the location on yeah so you have to have the vehicle connected to the internet which is crazy because now you have to subscribe to it in order to get to maps and it does not have the integration with the uh, wireless android auto or apple carplay hmm. so not good you have phone manage phones actually have my other phone with me and see it's bluetooth calling and media as far as the options it doesn't give you the option for the uh, android auto or apple carplay but you know as far as the reaction time of of this this is pretty cool you have the play store so google based uh, climate control let's see what we have here all right so of course the adjustments for the temperature heat ac air recirculating button sync auto what do we have here so this is the front this is the rear okay so this is the position of it and then of course you have some shortcuts here at the bottom as well a good looking display 
let's go back here main settings connections vehicle time let's see the connections nope trusted device oh, i was looking for the android auto apps here so view all 31 apps and you can actually download your own apps from the play store if you like to wi-fi hotspot vehicle status probably nothing's gonna really show up tire pressure all right we're at 37 all the way energy info we're going to talk about the range in just a bad trip okay so the range on this particular one is 279 this is the shortest range that's available with the uh, all-wheel drive and right now we're at like 69 percent it says, still says we have 193 miles to go um, you can also opt in for the rear wheel drive which not only is more powerful but has a longer range and it also can tow more this one can tow only up to uh, 1500 pounds with the all-wheel drive about 3500 pounds with the all-wheel drive so substantially more and, and the range goes 323 i believe is the miles on the uh, all-wheel drive so uh, on the rear wheel drive so this is uh, uh, longer in the rear wheel drive camera take a look all right kind of wish that it would take up the entire screen we have all this real estate not using it so this is your normal camera settings this is your rear view camera overhead and then the side views and they could work a little bit better as far as you know different features that we have on it and different controls head-up display dome light power window lockout auto high beams park assist see more controls if you want to close that up go back and of course we have the different drive modes that's normal sport snow ice and my mode I'll leave it in sport now this is not the fastest one uh, the faster one is actually the fastest one is the ss with 555 horsepower uh, but this one supposedly it's good so we're going to check that out down at the bottom you have some controls you know if for somebody that likes to adjust the temperature and the fan speed the old-fashioned way here it is for you i like the vans pretty good looking kind of mercedes looking like what's also mercedes looking like check it out this is the uh the shifter so the shifter mercedes been using that for years i haven't seen that on the chevy but here it is so you have the up for reverse down for drive pull it towards you for neutral and push the button on the side to park and there's one interesting feature about this vehicle too you don't need and the buttons to turn this vehicle on if you have the key on you you just get in it put your uh, foot on the brake and the vehicle starts and down here you have a little bit of storage a little deep inside of here but this is not your charger and then you have pretty deep storage here too two usb type c ports two cup holders this is where your charger is and then of course you have a little bit more storage or quite a bit of storage here and I wish it kind of open to the side like some of the other manufacturers do this this is kind of bulky up on top you have this digital mirror and then you have their OnStar SOS your lights they're all LEDs no sunroof illuminated mirrors and this is it it's looking pretty good Let's see how it drives and of course before we take it for a spin let's take a look at the pricing so three different trim levels are available for 2024 chevrolet blazer uh ev now the lt is the base one starting at 56 715 it is available with the all-wheel drive and the range is 279 279 is also the range on the rs all-wheel drive but if you opt in for the rs uh, rear wheel drive you get up to 324 miles the standard is an all-wheel drive rear wheel drive is optional and the starting msrp on the rs is 60,215. and we don't have the pricing on the ss at the time of this filming it's uh, going to be available spring 2024 the range on this one would be 294 555 horsepower zero to 60 in their four seconds so definitely a performance version something that uh, is going to rival like the ford mach e gt kia ev6 gt or maybe a tesla model y performance now the first two trims um, there as far as the performance they're going to be 
pretty much identical as the features that are going to be different. Starting MSRP though at 56,715 kind of uh, feels a little steep, and especially in comparing to the other vehicles uh, that are in this segment. But let's take it for a spin and let's see how it drives. Now, when you put it in drive, it gives you that droney sound like uh, a lot of electric vehicles do. And we have this fairly wide space right here. Let's see if I can turn it around, steering wheel all the way, and let's see. Yeah, we're gonna make it, made it. All right, yeah, not bad. Now, as far as the suspension here, it does not have an adaptive suspension. So all of the models, I mean, the LT and the RS are gonna uh, feel in the same 21 inch rims. That's what we have. As far as the suspension, I think it's a good balance between uh, the uh, comfort that going over the bumps and the stability of the vehicles. So while we're driving, I'm gonna hit a few uh, bumps along the road see how it absorbs it actually pretty good I like the meaty tires they are gonna give you that more cushion if you're driving it an interesting thing to mention too that uh, this vehicle the blazer EV shares the platform with Cadillac Lyric uh, and also with the new and upcoming Acura ZDX that's going to be all electric as well as the Honda Prologue that's coming out this year. So this is going to be the vehicles based on the same platform. Uh, the Chevy just uh, last year I believe they uh, made a deal with Tesla that uh, they're going to be able to use the charging stations. Well you know why build your own if you have an infrastructure that's built already by the largest EV manufacturer, which is Tesla, of course. And then let's go on the road here. Let's see how it handles. I don't like that sound. I don't like that droney sound. It would really bother me. I'm not sure if I can turn this off or not, but this is something definitely to either get used to it or turn it off. There are several different settings for your pedal too. So let's see. As far as the acceleration, this is from the rolling start. Got it up to almost 50, so pretty good actually. And uh, different regen buttons as far as for your pedal. Now I have the one pedal driving, I turn that on and you can feel the difference right away. As soon as I ease off my foot off the gas, it starts breaking and it pulls you back. So definitely a, a noticeable difference when you uh, turn that feature on. Now I'm gonna do the acceleration here. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to check that out for you. Yep, oh, this head up display, it's very bright. I was coming too fast probably on that Mini Cooper that was in front of me. And it definitely gave me a visual warning saying hey you're getting too close but i have to say that overall it feels very good while driving it the one pedal driving though it will take quite a bit for me to get used to i like to coast so i turn that off there you go this is more like it and definitely it's going to extend the range when you have it on but if you're not used to it just keep it off it's going to feel more like a regular uh, vehicle when you don't have it on if you like Star Wars, you're probably gonna like this drony sound. I do like Star Wars, but I don't like this drony sound. All right, we have a little stretch of road here. Let's see really quick how it accelerates. Zero, and let's go. Buzz me and Scotty. Hey, you know what? I don't know what the number is, zero to 60, probably about maybe six seconds or so. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. And it's gradual too, so it doesn't push you in the seat like a lot of the electric vehicles do. Head-up display is really bright, it's right in front of you. Um, there, is, there are adjustments on it, so it, you can make it your own. I'll get stuck behind this heavy equipment, let's see how we can pass it. 
hey, you know, no problems whatsoever. Overall, not a better vehicle. I'm not sure if I would call it the uh, SUV of the year. I, I think there's pretty worthy competitors out there. And I've done reviews on the Kia EV6, EV9. I've also done the review of the Ford Mustang Mach-E and Tesla Model Y. So I've done pretty much all of them that are the electric SUVs. They said they compared it with 40 different vehicles. So they must have had the non-electric vehicles in that. And in that case, that definitely would not be my top choice. But anyways, not a bad vehicle. I like the technology. I like what they've done with it. And I like the Chevy's finally uh, coming ahead with this newest technology that they've been lacking for years. Now this screen is beautiful. It has a fast reaction time. I wish I could, uh, you know, check it out and see how the maps are, but this is Google system. So it's Google maps. Uh, I kind of wish they left the integration with the Apple CarPlay for those who like uh, Apple better than the Android. But for those of us who use Android, like myself, I would probably get used to it really, really quickly. I put it in park, it makes the sound, unlocks the door, and it turns off that drony noise. I'm back at the dealership, guys. It's time for me to turn it back to the dealership so they can sell it. I'm here at Gettle Chevrolet of Punta Gorda, Florida. I'm going to post the link and the phone number in the description of this video. So if you are shopping for one, they have it. It's available at the time of this filming. And if you like watching videos like this, don't forget, check out the rest of my channel. Consider subscribing. Hit that like button and make sure you turn that bell notification ring bell on so you won't miss any of the content that's coming out. And I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.